Everyone told me that I shouldn't become an entrepreneur or an event coordinator because I wouldn't make any money, there was no degree for it, but I continue to pursue it because it makes me happy. Hey everyone, it's Nessie Anderson here at John Jay College with a brand new episode of Pathless Travel. Today's guest is entrepreneur and event coordinator extraordinaire, Scott Morris. Now, take a good look at him. Where do you know him from? Is that Joe Buttons? Is uh, that, is uh, that uh, Katie Burns? Is that most deaf? No, that is Scott Morris. Scott is most known for founding and hosting the annual Dean's List Tour, which is a traveling showcase that brings to you the best the brightest, the most talented up and coming artists across the nation right to your school. What school are you talking about? Your college, your university, your middle school, your high school, are you in elementary school oh, yet? Or yeah, your yeah, elementary yeah, school. Yeah, so if you haven't seen him, you don't take it up with him. You take it up with your school. Scott, thank you so much for being here. Thank you so much for allowing me to be here with you. I'm so excited. You know what makes this moment even more special is that we're here at John Jay. And I know that this was the first place that actually put a mic in your hand. So you're a Renaissance man. You do this tour thing, but this was the this place kind of gave you a, a voice. Yeah, this is home. This is home. This is home. We home. <laughs> so talk you're to me. I'm in. I'm in your living room today. <laughs> talk to me about what opportunities you created for yourself that led to your big break in regards to the tour. I started at John Jay College, and at John Jay, I was a part of the Rainbow Club, which eventually led me to meeting so many different students while I was hosting events. And in promoting an event, I eventually realized there was a lot of students that were just like me that wanted to meet and build relationships. And in 2012, I just came up with the idea, let's create a way where students can interact and be engaged with each other and create something that could eventually have a really large impact on our community. And that's how I came up with the tour, Dazeless. So starting from showcases and realizing that it could be more, there's a lot of talent out there and connected with those students that summer 2012 came up with the tour, came up with the name, did the auditions, and so many people came out. Wow, that's amazing. So being from a university, yeah. going to school, you guys know, as it, sometimes it can, you can feel like you're just a number. So especially, you know, that, that feeling enlarges itself when you insert yourself into like the entertainment industry, the music industry. So what did you do to deliberately brand yourself? It was, to be honest with you, there's so many different things that people know me for, but it came to my ties. Like, it started coming that people, I would dress a certain way, especially within my campus. Everybody knew when I came on campus, they would look for my tie. That's how somebody would recognize me. What tie is Scott wearing today? So eventually, shout out to Sinclair. He gave me the tag, which was like, follow that bow tie. And then from there, students just started catching on. Scott got this tie, Scott got this tie, Scott got this one. So from there, that just helped leading and gravitating more students to want to know, or people outside of school, to know what exactly it is that you do. Right. Which would spark that conversation to where it allowed me to tell people whether I hosted, I was an artist, I had this tour going on, which allowed more opportunities to come out, but it came from the way that I dressed. I love you on point today. So talk to us about your tie today. You got a little Western feel mixed with. Ne nephew told me that. Okay. <laughs> okay. Okay. <laughs> so talk to me about one thing that most people don't know about your journey to where you are now. Because you're a very friendly person. Mm -hmm. You follow that bow tie on Instagram and Twitter and all that stuff. And you are very um, transparent okay. with a lot of you know of yourself, of your art, you know, you rap as well. So what is one thing that most people don't know about your journey to where you are now? What is one thing? I think people know a little bit because I guess I'm very open. Mm -hmm. When I meet somebody, especially if I feel comfortable, I feel like anything that I went through can allow somebody to either continue amongst their journey. So I like to be open and share different things. Right. But I think the thing that people like now are starting to realize and a lot of people didn't know is that I was very insecure. Like I always had ideas, but it's different when you have an idea and people don't see you as a professional and they don't want to take your suggestions because it's like, and who have you done work with? How long have you been doing it for? And that kind of led me to feel like 
I wasn't in a space or I just wasn't good at what I wanted to do. Because I had a whole bunch of friends around me that were positive and wanted to get things done. But me in general, it was just, I was insecure and it led to me having suicidal thoughts. And me not feeling that I was meant to be here. So going through that, I think that's one of the things that people didn't know, that I was battling insecurities and I'm just trying to understand, do I deserve to be here? Do I have a purpose? And overcoming that eventually led to me saying, let's do this tour, let's challenge ourselves, let's be what we can be because somebody else we need to hear this story so they can continue going on and they can understand that their life is worthwhile. Right. Thank you so much for sharing that piece about yourself because I knew, but for you to share with everyone else, it was hard. It took a long time. I, I commend you yeah. because, you know, whether you like it or not, like suicide thoughts are real. And it happens more often than people like to admit. It happens more often than people would like to admit. But nobody wants to talk about it. Everybody's afraid or they, you know, they, they feel like they'll be judged. Yeah. And it's like you want help, but you don't know how to get help because you feel like people won't even understand where you're coming from because they already have their mind made up about you and your situation. Yeah. So talk to me about how you were able to like move past that. How did you, you know, how did you, how did you recover? I would have to say, so um, it's just about which made me understand because like I felt like I was given a second chance, and that's the reason why I like to encourage people because encouragement does make people want to get up and go out and go after something, especially when you have support behind you. So, um, and, and John Jay, one of my biggest inspirations is because of what he did for me. His name is Marlon Daniels. So Marlon Daniels was um, our student activity director over here. He did a lot of the events, and I thought the way that he engaged with the students and the way that he handled and conducted business was dope. Mm -hmm. But I didn't know him. He just knew that I knew almost everyone here. Because every time I would come in, everybody was like, yo, Nigel, what up? Yo, what you doing? Where you going? What's going on? And I was just so friendly. But it was just being here created comfort because within side, I just didn't know what I wanted to do. Everybody knew what they wanted except for me. And just being in that space was a little uncomfortable. But I just like to be around people because it made me feel good. Just to know what people do and stuff. Right. So um, we have this annual talent show. It's called John Jay's Got Talent that was founded. And I think it was either the third or second year, I'm not too sure. So, but I know it was one of those years I hosted it with the dean. And I've never hosted an event of that stature or that big before in front of so many people. And then to have him in the committee be like, nah, I want Nigel to do it. It was just like, what? And it's like, I didn't even want to say no because it was like, I don't want to let you down. But it was just, I felt like if he never took that time to really reach out and say, I believe in you, I don't know if I'd be here today. So for that, I'm always grateful because it was like, it took that and going through that and knowing that, okay, there's so many people that probably go through that too. Right. My story can help them see that they have a purpose. So I'm always grateful for them. It's like my brother. Yes, I'm grateful for him too because yeah. you're here. Your story is very powerful and it will help a lot of people. So I'm so happy that you're able to talk, talk about that. Yeah. Now, one last thing before we move on. Can you talk about what was going on with you in your life at that time and what you would do differently now that you're on the other side of things? The only thing I would say, um, if I had to do anything different, I would just say I would take more time into investing in my career and trusting that I could do this. I wouldn't change anything that I did at the time because then I wouldn't be doing it today. Right. So, so do you think that you got to that place because of doubts about your career? Yeah, I felt, I felt like it could have been maybe because I didn't take the time to like educate myself and understand because like now I'm more informed. Mm -hmm. But I think like I didn't know too much about what it takes to be an artist or what it takes to start your own business. Mm -hmm. Difficult. I just was programmed. I got to go to school. This is my major. Music put as playing B, C, or D behind it. Right. And stick with what I'm doing here instead of having faith in this is my life. And I'm saying some people may not like the decision I make, but this is me. I have to make myself happy. Right. And I got to do it because at the end of the day, whatever jo job or career I choose, I'm doing this for the rest of my life. Right. And so I would just have, I don't think I would really change it you know, other than just doing my research. Right. So for people that are in that space and you, because it's just overwhelming. When you go to yeah. college, 
And it's just like, you just gotta know, you gotta have Ooh. your life set. Not even once you graduate. A lot of people say like, oh, by 25, I'm gonna have this laid out. But it's like, when you go to college, it's like, you gotta have your whole life put together. Exactly. That's what they make you feel. That's, what, that's how they make you feel. But you shouldn't feel overwhelmed. You just need to take the time out, like she said, to research and, you know, find out how you go about making your dreams a reality. And it is overwhelming and it's a lot. But everything happens with time. Don't take yourself out. So moving back into the space of like your tours and everything. Now, I don't even want to know. I can't even wrap my mind around how to even plan a tour. How do you get people from all over the country? How do you bring them all to these different places? Like, like managing people is a lot. So what do you know now about, uh, you know, doing this tour yeah. that you wish you knew when you first started two years ago? Crazy, like, so when we first started the tour, I like you said that, like, we didn't really know too much. We were just going off of, I think this makes sense. And by God's grace, it led to where people started understanding because of our results and the time that we would put in. Because I've always been big on the experience. Right. So, like, now, this year, just going back from year one to year three, like, making sure we have time sheets, or making sure that you have, when people are with me, people have been creating that list so people know what time they're supposed to be appointed for the interview, the types of people, the way that you're supposed to interact with an artist, and also understand what is it when it comes to their needs and wants. Right. Um, practice spaces, debriefing, all of those things is important because you're dealing with so many different personalities. Not every person that you're dealing with is different. Right. So, you love networking. Yeah, I like people, man. This is the guy that's around <laughs> the college giving out all the party flyers. That's him. The one putting it on your card, that's him. <laughs> so, yeah, I'm calling you out. I'm calling you out. So, now, a big, you know, what something that took networking to the next level is social media. Yeah. So, how are you uniquely using social media to further your brand? Um, I just, I just, to be honest with you, like, I'm just usually myself on social media. I love memes. I just love asking questions. I like keeping in contact with people. I feel the thing that people stray away from is the engagement. Mm -hmm. And they forget that no matter what people want to be talking to. Right. Like, somebody will make a post, and then they'll forget to answer somebody. Or they'll just do an invite or instead of personally inviting them and it goes a far away because people still want to feel like you care. Right. And because I'm just genuinely, genuinely like that, it's like for me, it's easy for me to be like, oh, I see you in the Bible, what's up? And I'm gonna write in your page, but that's just me being me. Like, yo, where you was at yesterday? Yeah. Dad told me you was gonna be there, but you wasn't there. But that's just me being myself. Right. So I just feel like it just, as long as people just don't forget to engage with your audience, then the things that you do will be fine. Gotcha. So you have this, I think, aside from your bow ties, yeah. you're also known for your energy. I feel like no one can be sad around you. It's just you're <laughs> so bubbly and crazy that's yeah. off the wall. Well, my coworkers said that. They said, like, every time you come in, like, but I used to work unit though, so every time I would come in, everybody would be like, oh, Nigel said, yo, or I'm in a fit room. Everybody wants to, like, be active. We got a lot to talk about. Yeah. So, I just like making sure people like feel good or they can go throughout the day and just because I know where I was at once and you know what I'm saying to see that somebody made a difference in my life just by reaching out, I understand how far it can go just to ask somebody how it should be. Right. So if you guys are there and you're wondering who is this Nigel guy that he keeps on bringing up, it's him! So that's my real name, man. <laughs> that's the crazy part. Like I said, Scott Morris is the artist, that's the businessman, that's where people know me from. But all my high school friends, everybody that got the chance to really know me and connect with me, that's my real name. Nephew was able to get it on camera. Yep. That's, that's my real name. He can't hide no more. That's <laughs> Nigel Gupta. Yeah, yeah. It's oh, camera. my goodness. So, you know, although you smile and although you always, uh, you know, put your best foot forward, there are some down days, especially yeah. career-wise, because you have a lot of success. What would you say was your last career low and how did you recover from that? Because the message that we want to get out to people is that you're going to have career lows, you're going to have life lows, but the message is that you can bounce back and you will bounce back. So don't let that low keep you down. I think I think my a career low, trying to think, it probably was um, a couple of days ago. This is just for me, so mm -hmm. I just big. Um, I guess knowing that 
Because I hate to kiss her. That's one thing I hate to do. Mm -hmm. So it was like an interview that I had to do mm -hmm. in a sense, the same day as we had to pretend an event. And it was just traffic. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Which is so much going on. And I understand it because, like I said, it's a lot of protesting, a lot of people going on being active within the community, which I highly respect. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? But a lot of traffic came and it backed up everything on the bridge. So I was trying to do two places at once. But unfortunately, I had to let the host know for the radio station I'm going to be here at that time due to the traffic being backed up. And that was my first time really ever canceling on an interview. Mm -hmm. So for me, I felt that that was a low because I had to cancel. Right. So I just felt so down in the dump because it was just like, I really had to cancel on you and I hate that. Mm -hmm. Because I like, if I tell somebody I'm going to be here, I'm going to be there. Right. No matter how I'm going to get there, I'm going to find a way, but I will get there. Right. So for me, I felt that was a career low because I had to cancel it. But like I said, things happen and I understand because at the end of the day, there is a situation currently going on and everybody wants to make sure our voice is heard. Right. You're a man of your word. So even though you cancel, your track record shows that like this is not what you do. This yeah. is a fall in line with your brand. This was like a slip up, out of your control kind of thing. So... You do many things, so as you guys may or may not already know, aside from event planning and running this fabulous tour, he's also a rapper, <laughs> he's also a promoter, what else, what else you got going on? Why not a list? He just does everything, he's a renaissance man. So what would you say, see, we don't have to, I, that, was a, that was a rhetorical question, we don't have time for him to run down a list of all like, the things mm, he actually nah. does. And he's a student, he's still really, in school. He's still in school. He's 23 years old, and he's still in school, and he's doing all of this. What are you doing? Watching this interview. Thank you. So I what? tell her she do a lot. <laughs> I try to keep up with Netflix. Oh, stop. So what would you say is the career moment that you're still waiting for? I think I had a career moment so far, but I'm still waiting for more. Like, I'm still looking to eventually reach across, like, 50 states, be able to arm. Um, employ people through the dean's list, no boys allowed, and other like business events that I do have. And I want to be able to get people jobs and let people be able to like feel comfortable working within what I'm trying to create. So that's one of the defining moments I'm trying to have. Outside from like meeting kids, I love talking to the kids and hearing that the kids have different aspirations and stuff that they want to do. And when we come to their school, they feel real like this other girl I met, she's a sixth grader, she asked me for my autograph. Aww. You know what I'm saying? And it was just like, when she asked it, I was like, I'm not even famous. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? But when she said that, it was just like, wow, she sees me as someone that could be on TV one day because you're so excited, you want my autograph, you want to take yeah. pictures, and it was just so cool and then to hear her story that because we came there, she feels she can actually be a singer one day. Right. And so, stuff like that. That's awesome. And then when she gets of age, she can come on tour with you because you have the No <laughs> Boys Allowed tour, which is a yeah. subdivision. See how I plug you right there? I'm looking out for the people. That is popping, man. So tell us a little bit about uh, the No Boys Allowed Tour, which is a okay. subdivision of the Deep so, List Tour. No Boys Allowed Tour is an all-female tour that most women are proud I'm big on that. I feel like a lot of times with the music we've had, it always had to be a male and female tour. Right. And I never really saw, like I said, um, too many like tours that was just females touring giving them that major platform, especially the independent level. So what I wanted to do was give those artists that opportunity to go out there and show that you are a woman, you can do your thing, you're dope. Right. Just, you know what I'm saying? You don't gotta be on the same tour as a guy that you look at. No, I want you to shine with the women that you are, the other ladies that you're around, do your thing, you're dope. And it started from when we did this notorious cypher back in, um, three years ago. And I saw this girl, RJ Bagger, and I forgot who it was, I'm sorry about that, but it was two girls that really stood out, mm -hmm. King of Love, that's what it was. Two girls that really stood out and did their thing in that cypher against a whole bunch of male MCs. Mm -hmm. And from there, I was just like, nah, I gotta figure out a way to give women a platform. And then from there, I was just like, oh, we got the artists, oh, there's also female DJs out there. Let's just get the female DJs out there. We don't want no males really on the tour as the major faces or the main people out there. Now let's right. go find some females that DJ. Let's find some females that host. Let's find some female artists and create that platform. It's for the women so that they can push themselves. They can show everybody out there that they are talented. There's women out there that's doing stuff and they're good. That's awesome. I love it. You guys, give this man a round of applause. So, <laughs> as you guys know, 
as you guys already know, I got you guys covered. You're not here to ask your question for Scott yourself, so I got you. I comb Instagram, I comb Twitter, but oh, got you. Got all the questions that you guys want to know. So you ready? Are you, are you sure? I think you should be a little bit nervous. I found out some stuff about you. They don't know. I got stuff about you, too. <laughs> I don't know right. about you. All right, so first things first. You were on MTV's True Life. Yeah. Everybody wants to know about your experience with that. And, like, how did that come about? Um, Honestly, like I said, it came from Sapphire Heart. So Sapphire Heart, they had MTV was following her around. And she ended up making the tour. So I honestly didn't know what was her full situation until MTV premiered True Life. Mm -hmm. It was just... I had a slot open at St. Francis. So St. Francis is one of the schools that I actually went the beginning of my career. I was doing a lot of shows at. It was a showcase that I called I Have a Dream. And the mm -hmm. whole theme was based around the concept of Martin Luther King. So I don't to just use music to do that. Right. So she performed at it. And then from there she let me know MTV was coming through. And then um, she made it because everyone loved her performance there. So she had an audition. So everything that they said on MTV was true because it's like, even though she had MTV, I still needed to make sure that you were going to be good because then I have to take you from here and put you to a bunch of schools to perform at. Right. So after she went through that process, they captured the whole situation when I told her that I'm going to put you on the tour and we can move forward with you. Mm -hmm. After seeing that, it was just like, wow, she's going through so much. And this tour, which was the No Boys Allowed she was a part of, made that difference within her life. Right. So talk to us. For the people that weren't able to see yeah. um, that episode, talk to us about what she was going through and how being a part of your tour helped. So she was homeless and she was going from like her and her mother, like her mother from watching the episode and understanding like her mother wanted to continue to pursue her career in the entertainment business mm -hmm. while she wanted to do the same thing. And she had to babysit sometimes and stay and watch her brother. And sometimes you wouldn't know where they were gonna sleep at night, where the next gig was coming from. And it was just, eventually her and her mother had that conversation where she could let her mother know in a sense. It's kind of that story where it's like, you promise your mother, if you give me that chance, I'm gonna make sure you don't regret your promise because you're believing in me. Right. So her mother put that trust and then she took over and then from there, a life changed here. She was dealing with a producer, who was working on music and getting things to go. but. She had a, she had one of those stories it's just like you want her to make it. Right. Because you see how things is in her life and it just reminds you, you got to be so grateful for everything that you have, even the littlest things that you're blessed with because somebody may not have what you have. Mm -hmm. But she was homeless. And then going through the tour, she did great on it. She was always performing. There was people that always complimented her all the time. Her performance that came to this and she was dope. Right. So she let me know all the time and she was grateful to be a part of it. I still keep in touch with her now. She's in Houston. So, but she's dope. Awesome. So, with you creating this tour, it requires some funding. So, where does money coming from? Like, talk to me about the funding. Ooh. And talk to me wow. about, like, the sponsors. Like, let's get real. Let's to be honest with you, we keep it 100% with you all. We are looking for sponsors. The past two years during this tour, everything, honestly speaking, has come out of our pocket. And it's because we've reached out to people and people, and like I said, I understand when it comes to a business, when the first couple, four, four years or so of business, you want to make sure that business is still around. Right. So I don't knock anybody for saying, let's wait another year. Because sometimes people are presented with flukes. Right. Somebody has a good year, then all of a sudden they're off to the map. So I totally understand that. But we had people that wanted to take interest, wanted to help fund, but never followed through. So a lot of it came through our pocket, and it's because we had that belief. These schools is reaching out to us because they understand that we have the talent and we have a story. And then going through that helped us create a story to where these young artists and this guy who decided to come up with an idea to travel, reach out to different students and stuff. Because honestly speaking, if we didn't have to come out of our pocket, we probably wouldn't be at a high school to where our first high school job was post high school, and it came out from the post that I did because it was so much that I was battling. Because it was just like, wow, we have all this that we're going through, we're not getting funded. Like for that Ohio trip, I had to find a way to get a thousand dollars to make sure I could make it easier so we could rent those cars. We were right. renting the cars, we didn't have additional drivers. It was just us believing in each other. And if we didn't believe in each other, we wouldn't know where we was going to find that push from us coming out of our pocket to pay for those stuff. Right. 
So by God's grace, now we're trying to get some. Wow, that's a lot of money. Cause you're not just talking about you. You're talking about that, everybody. The whole yeah, yeah, team. it's a lot. The whole team. Yeah, I always make sure I put in more so that they don't have to spend that much. But right. everybody decided to come out to help because everybody believed in the vision. Right. So a lot of people don't realize that this, there's like an audition process. Yeah. We got to do that. Right? It has to be done. So what has been, like how, how, do, you, how do you go about telling people? So audition? No, no. How do you go about telling people that like no, like they're not good? Because you're such a believer in um, empowering people to follow their dreams. But if their dream is the same, they can't do it. So what? let me walk you through a day for auditions. So auditions is usually very packed. So when you come there and then you meet, it creates that level of competition that's needed for you to step in that room. Mm -hmm. Because like this year I had on um, Neil Zayn on there as a judge. I had on um, the marketing director for Universal. I had a creative consultant from like Power 105 there. So we had different varieties of people that I've met in the past couple of months mm -hmm. to make sure that once you step in that room as an artist, it's not just people that you think know me that's in it. These people I don't really know like that. I end up meeting them, whether it's over social media, at an event, at some place I was trying to promote. So these are people that I just end up meeting. Right. You know what I'm saying? So we try to make sure that we have people that's there that know music. So when you come in there, you're not just getting no regular audition. These are people that work within the business. Right. So it's like, it's tough. You come in there, whenever they decide, if you connect with them, you're making that experience, they feel like you're here, you're good, you're dope at what you do, you're going to get a call back. But it's a process. Right. Everybody looks for something different. It's just because you have great music doesn't mean you can't perform that great music. Mm -hmm. And that's what I think a lot of people don't really understand, that just being in the studio and perfecting your craft and your sound that you can push out is always good. But people are eventually going to want to see you performing. Can you perform that song that you spent this time working on? And I think that's what a lot of artists sometimes forget, that I'm still in entertaining. That's right. a part of my job. And when you go on an audition, like I said, it's tough. Right. I've seen people come in there smiling. I've seen people come out even upset. I've seen people come out saying, I didn't know it was going to be this difficult. Right. But I like it that way because you don't know what you're going to get. Mm -hmm. Make sure on your side that you are prepared because you never know who you're going to see. Right. And these people, they seen you at this audition. You might grow in the next couple months if you didn't make it. You know what I'm saying? And they may see you at this show and be like, I remember I auditioned it. It's great to see where they have gone. Right. You know what I'm so we're still allowing people to network and meet and see faces of people that they may need to be in contact with in the future. Now, I think the great thing about this is, you know, aside from you hosting the tour and aside from you founding the tour, but you know how it feels to be an artist because you are one. Yeah. So talk to us. About Scott Morris, the rapper. What's going on with that rap career, sir? What's going on? You, you know, get, catch us up. All right. So, um, I got something in the works. Mm -hmm. Come on. You can't say something. Got, family. Got, you family. All right. All right. right. So, so with family. So, I got a project in the room. See, you know what? You over here playing me good games. I can't. You said family, so I didn't want to say something right? to my family, but right. I got to say project. Mm -hmm. So, the thing I'm saying. You rude. He's rude. You know? Nah, nah, I'm that I'm that um, family member that come over on Thanksgiving with the napkins to make sure everybody has a napkin. Oh, yeah, that's, that's, what, that's your contribution to you the table. You, you know, somebody got to bring napkins, you know what I'm saying? Well, we've come to the end of the interview, but you know I can't let it end. I gotta, you know, make sure that the ladies are covered because you are a very friendly guy, if you know what I mean. So, you know, what's your relationship status? What's going on with the ladies? Oh, man, right now I'm single, man. Uh, I think women are everything. I love women. But right now I'm single. So, mm -hmm. so. There you, he's, he's up for grabs. Nephew, so, are you single? I try to give a little moment. You see, don't be trying to switch. I'm focused on my career at this time. Okay. Focus on my career at this she's, time. Fellas, she's single, if you didn't know. That's what she's saying. That's a real, yeah. That's, that's another, that's another, that's another show. That's another day. Thank you so much for talking with us. Look, he's saying hi to his fans outside the door. Really, we in an interview with you saying hi to your fans. See? My home girl. What is his home girl? I think just told us he was single, right? I am single though. <clears throat> Thank you so much for talking with us and having That was so much shade. <laughs> having the courage to make your passion your career. I appreciate it. If you guys enjoyed this interview as much as I did, I need to know it. I need
need you to click that subscribe button. I need you to comment. And I need you to make sure all your friends watch. Until next time. Bye. Part of the Rainbow Club, which eventually led me to meeting so many different students when I was hosting events. And then from hosting an event, I eventually realized there was a lot of students that were just like me that wanted to meet and build relationships. And in 2012, I just came up with the idea, let's create a way where students can interact and be engaged with each other and create something that could eventually have a really large impact on our community. And that's how I came up with the tour, Daisies. So starting from showcases and realizing there could be more and there's a lot of talent out there and connected with those students that summer of 2012 came up with the tour, came up with the name, did the auditions and so many people came out. Wow, that's amazing. So being from a university, yeah. going to school, you guys know, as it, sometimes it can, you can feel like you're just a number. So especially, you know, that, that feeling enlarges itself when you insert yourself into like the entertainment industry, the music industry. So what did you do to deliberately brand yourself? It was, to be honest with you, there's so many different things that people know me for, but it came to my ties. Like, it started coming that people, I would dress a certain way, especially within my campus. Everybody knew when I came on campus, they would look for my tie. That's how somebody would recognize me. What tie is Scott wearing today? So eventually, shout out to Sinclair. He gave me the tag, which was like, follow that bow tie. And then from there, students just started catching on. Scott got this tie, Scott got this tie, Scott got this one. So from there, that just helped leading and gravitating more students to want to know, or people outside of school, to know what exactly it is that you do. Right. Which would spark that conversation to where it allowed me to tell people what I hosted. I was an artist, I had this tour going on, which allowed more opportunities to come out, but it came from the way that I dressed. I love you. You're on point today. So talk to us about your time today. You got Everyone told me that I shouldn't become an entrepreneur or an event coordinator because I wouldn't make any money, there was no degree for it, but I continue to pursue it because it makes me happy. Hey everyone, it's Nephi Anderson here at John Jay College with a brand new episode of Pathless Travel. Today's guest is entrepreneur and event coordinator extraordinaire, Scott Morris. Now, take a good look at him. Where do you know him from? Is that Joe Buttons? Is uh, that, is uh, that uh, Kenny Burns? Is that most deaf? No, that is Scott Morris. Scott is most known for founding and hosting the annual Dean's List Tour, which is a traveling showcase that brings to you the best the brightest, the most talented up and coming artists across the nation, right to your school. What school are you talking about? Your college, your university, your middle school, your high school, what are you doing elementary school? Oh, yeah. Your elementary school. So if you haven't seen him, you don't take it up with him. You take it up with your school. Scott, thank you so much for being here. Thank you so much for allowing me to be here with you. I'm so excited. You know what makes this moment even more special is that we're here at John Jay. And I know that this was the first place that actually put a mic in your hand. So you're a Renaissance man. You do this tour thing, but this was the this place kind of gave you a, a voice. Yeah, this is home. This is home. This is home. We home. <laughs> so talk you're to me. I'm in. I'm in your living room today. <laughs> talk to me about what opportunities you created for yourself that led to your big break in regards to the tour. I started at John Jay College and at John Jay. A little Western feel mixed with. Nep nephew told me that. Okay. <laughs> okay. Okay. <laughs> so talk to me about one thing that most people don't know about your journey to where you are now. Because you're a very friendly person. You follow that bow tie on Instagram and Twitter and all that stuff. And you are very um, transparent okay. with a lot of, you know, of yourself, your art. You know, you rap as well. So what is one thing that most people don't know about your journey to where you are now? What is one thing? I think people know a little bit because I guess I'm very open. Mm -hmm. When I meet somebody, especially if I feel comfortable, I feel like 
anything that I went through can allow somebody to either continue amongst their journey. So I like to be open and share different things. Right. But I think the thing that people are now starting to realize and a lot of people didn't know is that I was very insecure. Like I always had ideas, but it's different when you have an idea and people don't see you as a professional and they don't want to take your suggestions because it's like, and who have you done work with? How long have you been doing it for? And that kind of led me to feel like I wasn't in a space or I just wasn't good at what I wanted to do. Because I had a whole bunch of friends around me that were positive and wanted to get things done. But me in general, it was just, I was insecure and it led to me having suicidal thoughts. And me not feeling that I was meant to be here. So going through that, I think that's one of the things that people didn't know, that I was battling insecurities and I'm just trying to understand, do I deserve to be here and do I have a purpose? And overcoming that eventually led to me saying, let's do this tour, let's challenge ourselves, let's be what we can be because somebody else may need to hear this story so they can continue going on and they can understand it. And I think it was either the third or second year, I'm not too sure. So, but I know it was one of those years I hosted it with the dean. And I've never hosted an event of that stature or that big before in front of so many people. Right. And then to have him and the committee be like, nah, I want Nigel to do it. It was just like, what? Right. And it's like, I didn't even want to say no because it was like, I don't want to let you down. But it was just, I felt like if he never took that time to really reach out and say, I believe in you, I don't know if I'd be here today. So for that, I'm always grateful because it was like, it took that and going through that and knowing that, okay, there's so many people that probably go through that too. Right. My story can help them see that they have a purpose. So I'm always grateful for them. It's like my brother. Yes, I'm grateful for him too because yeah. you're here, your story is very powerful and it will help a lot of people. So I'm so happy that you're able to talk talk about that. Yeah. Now, one last thing before we move on. Can you talk about what was going on with you in your life at that time and what you would do differently now that you're on the other side of things? The only thing I would say, um, if I had to do anything different, I would just say I would take more time into investing in my career and trusting that I could do this. I wouldn't change anything that I did at the time because then I wouldn't be doing it today. Right. So, but so do you think that you got to that place because of doubts about your career? Yeah, I feel, I feel like it could have been maybe because I didn't take the time to like educate myself and understand because like now I'm more informed. Mm -hmm. But I think like I didn't know too much about what it takes to be an artist or what it takes to start your own business. Mm -hmm. the difficulty, I just was programmed. I got to go to school. This is my major. My music put as playing B, C, or D behind it. Right. And their life is like, wow. Right. Thank you so much for sharing that piece about yourself, because I knew, but for you to share with everyone else. It was hard. It took a long time. I, I commend you, yeah. because, you know, whether you like it or not, like, suicide thoughts are real, and it happens more often than people like to admit. It happens more often than people would like to admit. But nobody wants to talk about it. Everybody's afraid, or they, you know, they, they feel like they'll be judged. Yeah. And it's like you want help, but you don't know how to get help because you feel like people won't even understand where you're coming from because they already have their mind made up about you and your situation. Yeah. So talk to me about how you were able to like move past that. How did you, you know, how did you, how did you recover? I would have to say, so um, it's just about which made me understand because it's like I felt like I was given a second chance, and that's the reason why I like to encourage people because encouragement does make people want to get up and go out and go after something, especially when you have support behind you. So, um, and John Jay, one of my biggest inspirations is because of what he did for me. His name is Marlon Daniels. So Marlon Daniels was um, our student activities director over here. He did a lot of the events, and I thought the way that he engaged with the students and the way that he handled and conducted business was dope. But I didn't know him. He just knew that I knew almost everyone here. Because every time I would come in, everybody was like, yo, Nigel, what up? Yo, what you doing? Where you going? What's going on? And I was just so friendly. But it was just being here created comfort because within the side, I just didn't know what I wanted to do. Everybody knew what they wanted except for me. And just being in that space was a little uncomfortable. But I just like to be around people because it made me feel good. Just to know what people do and stuff. Right. So um, we have this annual talent show. It's called John D's Got Talent that was founded.